Thank you for joining us for another Power Pack life changing message brought to you by Dr. Des Moines Kinney and Faith Builders Ministries Incorporated, where we build strong families, one soul at a time. We hope that this message is a tremendous blessing to you and pray that your journey to discovering your purpose is made clearer to you. Now, let's get to the message. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Maureen Kennedy, pastor of Faith Builder Ministries right here in Conyers, Georgia. And at first, I want to say, excuse the tardiness this morning. Had a couple things that we had to take care of before we got on the broadcast. But I want you guys to know that God has given us an amazing message to share with you guys today. And some of you may be wondering, when you look at the title, how narcissism affects outcomes, you may be wondering, why are we talking about this when it comes to church why is it why are we talking about this when it comes to the body of christ but i want you guys to understand something that's very very important there are a lot of people who are operating within churches a lot of people who are operating within the body of christ who actually do struggle with this narcissistic belief the way they operate they are narcissists and i want you guys to understand what it truly means so I want to show you a specific passage of scripture that shows you what it looks like. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper. Not maybe we, we might not get to all of it today. So I'm just going to give you that disclaimer right now. We may not get to all of it today, but I can guarantee you over time, we will be able to really dig deep into this so that we can understand how narcissism affects outcomes. But before we do that, let us pray together and then we're going to get straight into the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you now, God, for who you are. We thank you for this awesome day that you've given us. We thank you now, God, just for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. We thank you now, God, just for you being who you are in our lives. We thank you for your spirit, your grace, and your mercy. And we just thank you now, God, for what's about to happen, God, because of your shared word. And so, God, we ask that you give us a deeper level of understanding, God, of who you are and also who we are in you. And so, God, we want to be able to do and say whatever it is that you called us to do and say. And we just thank you now for what's going to happen, all the miracles, the blessings and the breakthroughs that we're going, that's going to happen, God, because of this word that's going to be shared today. So, Holy Spirit, we invite you in now. And we ask that you double your presence on so help us to be prepared and ready for what God has for us today. God, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. We're going to jump straight in. All right. We're going to jump straight in. And again, the title of the message for today is how narcissism affects outcomes. So let us go to 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25. All right, let me give you a moment to get there. First Samuel chapter 25, because many of you probably didn't even know that the Bible actually spoke about narcissism and how it affects outcomes. But I want you guys to understand more about it. And you know what? Before I even do that, let me share the definition. Because Some of you probably are wondering, what is narcissism? What is it all about? But a narcissist is a person who has excessive interest in or admiration of themselves somebody who's stuck on themselves we call it oh you fool of yourself you you stuck on yourself that's what a narcissist a narcissist is but let us go into the word i want to show you what it looks like in the bible first samuel chapter 25 and it says now samuel died and all israel assembled and mourned for him and they buried him at his home in ramah then david moved down into the desert of Paran. a certain man in Mon, who had property there in Carmel, was very wealthy. He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep, which he was shearing in Carmel. His name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surely and mean in his dealings. He was a Calebite. While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent 10 young men and said to them, go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, long life to you, good health to you and your household and good health to all that is in yours. Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them. And the whole time they were in Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants that they will tell you, therefore, be favorable toward my men. Since we come at a festive time, please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal the 
message, this message in David's name. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servants, who is David? Who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and my water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men coming from who knows where? David's men turned away and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to these to, the, to his men, each of you strap on your sword. So they did, and David strapped his sword on as well. About 400 men went up with David, while 200 stayed with the supplies. One of the servants told Abigail, Nabal's wife, David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our master his greeting, but he hurled insults at them. Yet these men were very good to us. They did not mistreat us, and the whole time we were out in the fields near them, nothing missing was nothing was missing. Night and day, they were a wall around the whole time. We were herding our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do, because this disaster is coming. Or disaster is hanging over our master and his whole household. He is such a wicked man that no one can talk to him. Abigail acted quickly. She took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five sails of, of roasted grain, and hundreds of cakes of, of raisins, and 200 cakes of pressed figs, and loaded them on the donkey. Then she told her servants, go on ahead, I will follow you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. As she came riding her donkey into a mountain ravine, there were David and his men descending toward her, and she met them. David had just said, it's been useless. All my watching over this fellow's property in the wilderness so that nothing of his was missing. He has paid me back evil for good. May God deal with David, be it, be it ever severely. If by morning I leave alone one male of all who belonged to him. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, pardon your servant, my Lord, and let me speak to you. Hear what your servant has to say. Please pay no attention, my Lord, to that wicked man, Nabal, her husband. He is just like his name. His name means fool. And folly goes with him. As for me, your servant, I did not see the man, see the men my Lord sent. And now my Lord, as surely as the Lord your God lives, and as you live, since the Lord has kept you from bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own words or your own hands, my may your enemies and all who are intent on harming my Lord, like be. <laughs> It'll be like Nabal. Listen, y'all, That this is a loaded scripture. I know I wasn't gonna be able to get to all of it today, but I want to talk to you guys from the perspective of how narcissism affects outcomes. Because in this particular passage of scripture, what I need you to understand is that David, the king and his men, he sent his men down to this particular uh, village, this, this place, Carmel, to speak to a man named Nabal. Nabal was very wealthy. He had a, an abundance of everything. And in that time, they had a commonwealth system. So it shouldn't have been a thing where Nabal wasn't willing to share what he had with David and his men. But what you see happening here is Nabal is so full of himself that he's like, well, I don't know who is this David, as if he never heard of David. OK, David's name had been ringing very, very loud in this particular area. Everybody knew that David was the new king. He was the new king at this at the time. And what I need you guys to understand is this. In this particular passage of scripture, Nabal is so full of himself that what he does is he insults this man who could very well take his life, take his whole family's life and take everything that he has. But instead of David doing that, what did David do? David said, you know what, let's go back down there again. I'm gonna have to show my face this time so that he knows exactly who I am, right? And so David shows up with his with his men. And instead of David starting to slaughter everybody, David said, you know what, let's just stand here and, 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 and keep watch of this man's stuff to make sure that nobody 
comes and takes what it belongs to this guy. But what I want you to understand is this later on in this particular passage of scripture, and we're going to get to it may not be this week, but I guarantee we're going to cover the rest of it. As the scripture plays out, what ends up happening is the wife, Abigail, she ends up offering. She gives an offering to King David. Not only does she give an offering, but she speaks these words where she wants him to understand that, oh, you know, Nabal, he's just a fool. You know, he, don't, don't worry about him, King David. It's, it's OK. This he doesn't understand what he's doing. He doesn't understand what he's saying. And let me tell you all something. That's how it works with a lot of narcissists. Narcissists, don't, they don't really understand what they're doing. They don't understand what they're saying. And what I want you to understand is the outcomes of narcissism, the, the, they don't end up great. A lot of times the people who end up being the narcissist, they end up saying things that is very offensive to people, but they want you to stay around them. You have individuals who are narcissists and they want to control everything. And let me tell y'all something. There are a few narcissists in the Bible. Another one is Jezebel. She wanted control of everything, control of everybody. And so when you have individuals who operate in what is called witchcraft, because any type of mind control that people are trying to exercise over other people, that's a form of witchcraft. Trust me, I've had people say things to me in my life. And I understood what it was that was going on at the time, because let me tell you something. When you're dealing with a narcissist, they think that everything's about them. Narcissists never want to go and help other people. They want everything to be about them. They're very manipulative. They want everybody to feel sorry for them, even when they are in the wrong. They can be wrong, but they'll start crying or they'll start talking about suicide and stuff like that because they want you to be on their side. They want you to feel sorry for them. But I always tell people this. Leadership is not about manipulation. Leadership is all about empowerment, inspiring people. You are there to help individuals to move forward. But a narcissist doesn't want to see you move forward. I know when I was in college and I was studying uh, psychology and we had to write a paper on narcissists. And I, I couldn't believe the, 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 the extent of, you know, the definition of a narcissist. I couldn't even believe some of the things that narcissists will do to try to get you to do what they want you to do. For instance, you will have a narcissistic parent who's basically trying to live out their life through their children. And so when you say you want to do something, they tell you, no, you can't do that. You're going to do what I say do. Well, wait a minute. What about the visions that God has shown me for my life? What about the things that God is clearly telling me that I'm supposed to do? So I'm not supposed to do that. You have a lot of narcissistic pastors out here who believe that you got to go through them in order to do what God told you to do. Oh, I got to release you first. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Listen, these are the things that I was told. Oh, your ministry ain't going to be nothing unless you got a bishop over you who can release you to do ministry. Well, wait a minute. What about God? See, God has released me to do ministry. What about the vision that God has shown me as far as my family? Why do I have to go and get the approval of a million people, right? Or this one person who thinks they're a million people, right? They just got a million personalities going on inside their head. But what I'm saying to you is narcissism affects outcome in a negative way. Because when you get down further into the scripture, you'll see where Abigail ends up going back to her husband and she tells her husband, Hey, King David really did show up. Those first few men that came, those were men from David's camp. And you insulted them. And then when I came back home, you sitting here with having a feast like you're the king. See, in America, we really don't understand this concept because we have this democratic society. But see, when you operate in a kingdom, see, the king chooses his citizens. And when the king arrives, anything the king basically requests, you try to make sure that you can offer it up to the king. And see, when a com you have a commonwealth system, it works like this. When one has, all of us have. But see, in America, we don't operate like that. And see, that's why a lot of us don't understand the kingdom of God, because we think that we're living in lack. But we're not living in lack, because if the father has, then all of his children have also. See, what I need you to understand is even when it comes to narcissists, narcissists want you to believe that you have to have them in your life in order for you to move forward and become successful. They want you to believe that it's their opinions that truly matter when it comes to your life. 
I know about a year ago, I taught a message about, do you want people's opinions or do you want God's plans? Because in Jeremiah, God says, for I know the plans that I have for you. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to share the plans with other people and then the plan is going to get to you. And then I, no, 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 no. What God is saying to you is the vision that he has for your life. God has implanted and imparted that into you so that every time you dream, every time you're driving in your car and an idea drops on you, or every time you're just sitting in silence in meditation, God is allowing your vision to be unloaded, to be downloaded inside of you. And what I know is this, when a narcissist is in your life, they're going to try to insert their vision. They're going to try to insert their opinion. They're going to try to insert their everything into your life and then try to make you feel bad if you don't take their road or take their route. But this is what I know. When you go back to the story, you see that Nabal, he was approached by these men and they told him, hey, we're here on behalf of David. The first thing he said, who is David? I know I've had narcissists ask me, who are you? Who you think you are? All because I wasn't willing to settle for less. I wasn't willing to settle for what they wanted for me. I've had Family, I'm just going to be transparent. I've had family tell me that I wasn't going to be nothing because I didn't do what they wanted me to do. I've had individuals who asked me questions and said that I turned my nose up. You didn't turn your nose up towards the family. How did I turn my nose up towards the family when I'm inviting family to basically share the life that God has blessed me with? I'm imparting wisdom. I'm imparting knowledge. Everything that I've learned, I'm trying to share. it. See, narcissists don't want to share information. Narcissists want you to pay them for everything. Narcissists don't want to see you succeed. Narcissists want everything for themselves. It's got to be about them. I know you know people like this because I pray that it's not you that I'm talking about or I pray that you are not uh, so engrossed into the company of narcissists that you don't see who I'm talking about right now, because God has given me this specific message for you today. And the message that he gave me is you have to watch the company that you keep. Because a lot of times the reason why you doubt yourself is because of what narcissists are telling you. The reason why you're afraid to move forward in your business is because you got narcissistic friends and family around you who are trying to tell you what they think you should and should not do. I want to tell you this now. I want you to focus on the plans and the purpose that God has for your life and not the opinions of narcissists because a narcissist is always going to be negative. They're always going to be negative. They're never going to come to you and tell you anything positive. Listen, a narcissistic parent will do this to you. You do something great, they'll tell you, mm, okay, I see it, but you need to do, and then you need to do, and you should have done, and I wouldn't have done it like that. Well, guess what? It's not you. See, a narcissistic parent is going to be in competition with you. A narcissistic friend is going to be in competition with you. See, a narcissistic spouse will try to be in competition with you. But see, when you understand what you're dealing with, then you're able to move forward with your life. See, narcissistic, uh, it, the behavior of it, it affects people and things in negative ways. Again, go back to the story in 1 Samuel chapter 25. You have to understand that what Nabal did, he was bringing ruin to his family. He was bringing ruin to his name. But let me tell you what happens later on in the story. See, Abigail, his wife, shares with him, hey, David came here himself. And guess what? There was an offering that had to be made. Well, Nabal, he... The Bible says that Nabal, he, he has basically a heart attack. Let me paraphrase. He has a heart attack and he turns to stone, almost like stone. And then here it is a few days later, he is smoked by God, meaning that he was taken out. God took him out. See, I want you to understand something. When you have individuals who are narcissistic and they don't do what God is calling for them to do because they're too busy trying to control other people. And that's how not, that's how narcissists operate. They are so busy trying to control other people that they don't even live out their dreams. They don't even live out their, the goals that they did set for themselves. They never get around to doing it. A lot of narcissists, they are very, uh, they, they are procrastinous, right? They, they procrastinate when it comes to 
their dreams. They procrastinate when it comes to the vision that God has given them. They procrastinate when it comes to the mission because they're so focused on everybody around them, everything around them. They're trying to control everything and trying to control everybody. But let me tell you something. When you're dealing with a narcissist, the best thing you can do is put distance between you and them. That's the best thing you can do. Some of you are dealing with narcissistic mates right now, boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, and wives. You're dealing with it right now, and you're wondering why. Every time you talk to them, they come back with something negative. Well, I don't see you start no business. Why you think you can do that? You trying to do everything. That don't make no sense. Why are you talking like that? That's crazy. You got all these big ideas. You got your head up in the clouds. That's what narcissists will tell you because they want you to settle and dumb yourself down to be what they want you to be. But this is what God is saying. You don't have to dumb yourself down around anybody. You don't have to do what nobody else is telling you to do, especially when you know that it's against what God is calling for you to do. This is what I need you to know. Today is the day where you put distance between you and the narcissistic people around you. Because as long as you continue to keep yourself in their company, what's going to happen is you're going to end up becoming what they want you to become, which is nothing. They want you to become nothing at all. But God says, I'm in your life to show you who you are. The enemy in your life is there to show you who you're not. I shared last week, see, the devil believes in cutting out things that God is calling you to birth out. See, God believes in natural birth. So when you deal with a narcissist, they are there to try to cut out the vision, cut out the dreams, cut out the goals, cut out everything that you live for, they want to kill off. We talk about how the enemy is there to steal, kill, and destroy. But I need you to understand this. The enemy is not going to come to you with these horns on his head, no red suit. He's going to come to you in the form of some of your family. He's going to come to you in the form of some of your friends. He's going to come to you in the form of some of your co-workers. He's going to come to you and sometimes in the form of your spouse. He's going to come to you in the form of people that you trust the most, people that you love the most. See, you got to teach people how to treat you. I know for a fact, just me personally, I've had to learn to put distance between me and some of my family members because they can't handle what God is doing in my life. It's not me that's causing all these things to happen. God orchestrates every move in my life, just like God is orchestrating every move in yours. So why is it that people feel like it takes something from them when you become successful? That's what you call narcissistic behavior, narcissistic tendencies. They don't want to see you succeed because they feel like it takes something from them. See, everything cannot be about one individual. See, I, I, I tell some of the, my brothers in my fraternity, I said, narcissists can't be a part of fraternities because they only in it for what they can get, not what they can give. And see, a lot of people can't be married because they're not caring about what they can give. They care about what they can get. See, that's narcissistic behavior and tendencies when it's all about you and what you can get. We do a lot of premarital counseling with people. And when I hear them say, I, 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 me, 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 I, I'm a little skeptical. See, you got to be skeptical when it's all about I, 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 me, me, me. It's not about you as an individual. God did not send you here for things to be about you. He sent you here so that you can impart something. You can plant something into this world that only you can do. And guess what? It's for the betterment of other people. God never shows you a vision of just for you to be selfish. God never shows you something so that you can just keep it all to yourself. I tell people this all the time. The greatest way to leave a legacy is to teach other people how to do what you do. The greatest way to leave a legacy, I'm going to say it again, is for you to teach people how to do what you do. I've learned this in business. Once you learn to duplicate yourself in other people, then your business starts to become successful. But when you think it's all about me, it all rests upon me, your business is doomed. And it will fail. In the military, you cannot have a single point of failure. That is so true. Because if everything rests on one individual, if you go outside today and get hit by a bus, then what's it? What's left to be said about your legacy? A success, a successful person needs a successor. 
You have to be willing to pass that baton. You got to pass on to somebody else. Dr. Miles Monroe taught this message so much. You got to have something that you can pass to someone else. But narcissists don't want to pass nothing to nobody. And what they will also do is they'll say, oh, it's because of me that you're into such and such. Oh, it's because of me that you have such and such. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be such and such and such. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have such and such and such and such. What God is saying, it's not about other people. It's not about what you did for somebody. It ain't about none of that. What it's about is you doing what God has called you to do on this earth. Again, a narcissist will never listen to anybody else because they think they got it all figured out. Oh, it's all about me and what I got to say and my opinions and all this stuff. They don't care what nobody else has to say. That's why they won't go to counseling. That's why they won't go to therapy because they think that they're going to tell the therapist what's going on. Oh, well, no, it ain't me who really need to come in here. I need to come in here and counsel you. You told the therapist that? You tell the counselor, well, I don't need nobody. I got it all figured out on my own. I got this. This all me. It's all me right here. I'm going to do my thing. Okay, cool. You keep doing your thing, narcissist. Most of you have probably watched TV shows like Law and Order and you've watched uh, different TV shows where they do all these investigations. They talk about narcissists and you thought that a narcissist was just somebody who just killed up a bunch of people. Well, no, a narcissist will also try to kill your opportunities. They'll try to kill your dream. That's why you got to watch who you share your vision and your dreams with. You can't share your vision and dream to everybody. You can't do it. I talk to young pastors all the time because guess what? I started pastoring when I was young, in my 20s. And what I tell young pastors is this. Don't share the vision with everybody because everybody ain't entitled to hearing that vision. I tell young married couples, don't tell everybody about the things that you guys are trying to accomplish and trying to do because everybody ain't happy for you. I tell young entertainers, listen. Don't go out here talking to other people about what you're trying to do and what you know. Let your work speak for you. Because, see, when you try to speak for your work, what happens is there are people who are going to try to kill it in you before you can even get started. Some of you may be asking, well, well, is that necessarily narcissistic tendency or is that necessarily a narcissist? Well, guess what? Sometimes you got just negative people. But guess what? A narcissist is a very negative person because everything turns back to them. I gave you the definition. A narcissist is one who is basically full of themselves. They don't care about you. They don't care about what happens in your life for real as far as you benefiting. What they care about is, let me see if I can get them to do what I want them to do. They're all about manipulation. They're all about that witchcraft. Narcissism affects outcomes in a very, very negative way. I'm here to tell you right now. Let me give you the definition again. It says a narcissist is a person who has an excessive interest or an admiration of themselves. Narcissists think, OK, the world revolves around them. That's what they think. The whole world revolves around them. That's why they share their opinion with no matter what's going on. They always right. They ain't never wrong. A narcissist think they ain't never. I ain't, never, I ain't wrong. I'm right. I know I'm right. Say something to me. I got it. I got this figured out. Well, guess what? You're a narcissist. If you think that you are always right, something's wrong. And let me tell you, the Bible talks about how pride comes just before the fall. We got to keep in mind that it's not about us. It's about us serving the way we're supposed to serve. A lot of people want to build a business. You can't be a narcissist and build a successful business. Because, see, at some point, you got to give up control of that business. That's like, you know, I'll give an example. You know, my mortuary transport company. I have to trust that my drivers are going to get to the services on time. I can't drive the hearse, the limousine, the, the van. I can't drive all of them. I have to trust that individuals are going to be able to do whatever it is that we agreed upon. When it comes to any business, you cannot be so in I got to control everything. Well, guess what? It'll never truly build. Because if everything rests upon you, it's bound to fail. You have to set up a solid team that you trust. You have to be willing to let people help you. We got to stop with this false humility stuff. Oh, I, well, yeah, nah, nah, nah. Stop with the false humility and allow people to help you. That's how you build. See, I grew up in an environment where I was taught, oh, well, do it yourself. If you can't, I mean, ain't nobody going to do it like you can do it. Well, guess what? I don't need them to do it like I would do it. Because the way I might do it might be wrong. 
See, I'm one of those people who are willing to admit, yeah, I might be wrong in some situations. I might be wrong in, with some circumstances. But what I do know is I, I read every day, y'all. I really do. I read every single day. The reason why I read is because I know I don't know everything. I know that I'm not the smartest person in every room. And guess what? If I am the smartest person in the room, I'm about to go to a new room. I want to go where all the people I can learn some stuff from. When I was in my early 20s, I didn't hang around a lot of 20-year-olds. You know why? Because a lot of the 20-year-olds that I did try to hang out with, they were thinking so immature. I said, man, I got to go and get around some dudes who got something going on. So I went around groups of guys who were much older than me, much mature than me, all of that. And the guys that I put myself around was a lot of times men who were believers in Christ. Because they helped me to understand that there are certain things that you don't need to focus on. And there are things that you do need to focus on. Number one, build it. Number two, what vision has God shown you? Number three, what is the mission that God has given you for your life? Because guess what? One day all this is going to be over. So the question is, what do you do? What do you do with your life between the day you're born and the day you die? What do you do? That's what matters, y'all. But see, when you got narcissists in your life, they want you to focus on what they want you to do. They want to hold you hostage. I talk to people about how that Python spirit is, is, is prevalent in today's world. People don't want you to share your opinion. They're trying to choke out all the life of you. They're trying to choke out all your opportunity. They're trying to choke everything out of you. I'm, I'm doing a chokehold, y'all. I'm on the chokehold. That's what they're trying to do to you, though. They're trying to choke out every single thing you're trying to do. Every idea you have, they try to choke it out. Oh, uh, whatever. You said what? You dreaming? Oh, uh, don't dream. You got goals? Uh-uh, don't have no goals. That's what they're doing to you. You, you talking about getting married? Uh-uh, you ain't getting married. I ain't married. I've been divorced three times. You ain't getting married. Look what happened to me. Guess what? Don't mean the same thing that happened to me. Look, you trying to, you, you trying to get a new job? You ain't going nowhere. You staying here with us. What you mean? See, that's, that's a narcissist operating. Again, go back to the story. David came with his men. Basically to protect what this man had, where they could have went in and slaughtered everybody. But they came to protect what was somebody else's. The question I always have for people is, what do you do when the ball is in your court? What do you do when you have power? What do you do when you have status? Do you give to other people or do you just turn your nose up and say, oh, I ain't got to do nothing for nobody? One thing I can tell you is this, I promised God, I said, Lord, if you ever bless me to make a six figure income ever, I said, God, I will make sure that my family's taken care of, not just the one in my house, but God, even my family back in Dillon, I'm from Dillon, South Carolina. I said, God, if my family needs anything, I want to be there for them. Because God, I know where I'm from, six figure salary is not really heard of. What I can tell y'all also is this, you got to learn to completely trust God with everything you have. Because just like God blessed you to get what you got, he can bless you to move beyond where you are. Listen, we got to understand that blessings come by default of blessing others. Blessings come by default of you making impact when it comes to others. Blessing comes by default. Now, a lot of times we think about blessing, we don't think about money. I'm talking about how much knowledge do you share with other people? The things that God has given you, as far as the knowledge and the wisdom, how often do you share with other people? I know right now, God has blessed me. I've been in the cryptocurrency space since 2014, and I've done extensive research for years. And now I just basically I give the knowledge away. Hey, man, you ever heard of cryptocurrency? Hey, let me share it with you real quick. Hey, uh, sis, brother, hey, you ever heard of cryptocurrency before? Hey, let me just show you what I've learned. Right now, God has blessed us to have over 3,000 students. And guess what? I have not charged them a dime. Not yet. I haven't charged them a dime. But this is what I'm telling y'all. What God has been showing me over the years is it's not about you being a hoarder and having everything all for yourself. It's about you sharing with other people. Share the knowledge. Share the wisdom. Share the wealth. If you have a healthy lifestyle and you see somebody else don't have a healthy lifestyle and they ask you, hey, man, how did you get there? Don't be sitting there. 
Well, you should have done better. Look at you. No, no. Share the information. Hey, man, this is what I did. I went and got a personal coach. Hey, I, I went. I got a gym membership at Planet Fitness or or LA Fitness or wherever. Or I got a personal trainer. I changed my diet. I went to uh, you know a, a dietitian and they taught me how to how to basically calculate everything so that I would make sure I'm getting all the carbs and protein and stuff that I need on a daily basis. Share the information. Listen, even as a pastor, I tell everybody this. I didn't go to Bible college to teach other people. I went to Bible college for me. But guess what? God says, now it's time to teach. So you know what I do? Whatever God gives me to teach, I teach. I'm one of those pastors. I don't believe in necessarily trying to take up a whole bunch of money for myself and all this kind of stuff. No. Any money that's sown into faith builders goes right back out into the community. There's scholarship funds that we support. Listen, it's, it's got to be a revolving door, y'all. It can't just be all for you. This broadcast that we've been blessed to be able to do on a weekly basis, the money goes to this broadcast. If people call and they say, hey, Pastor, you know, we weren't able to uh, pay, you know, whatever it was. OK, God bless you. Hey, just send us the bill. We'll go ahead and take care of it for you. Right. That's what ministry is all about. Not just hoarding it and keeping everything up to yourself. The Bible talks about how when people were trying to store it for themselves, the canker worm and the pummel worm came and they ate it up. See, I believe this. If you allow there to be a revolving door, so many great things can happen. If you allow other people to stand on your shoulders, there are so many great things that can happen. No, you may not be called to 100,000 people, but you could still affect and impact 100,000 people just based on you teaching what you know to other people and allow them to go out there and be the disciples. See, when the Bible talks about making disciples, it's not just talking about preaching the gospel, like, you know, like what I'm doing right now, preaching the word like this. Sometimes it's you making disciples when it comes to doing what you do outside of church. When you look at what you do, how many people have you taught how to do what you do? Oh, I know you're afraid of competition. Oh, you gonna don't 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 go and start the same business as me. Don't move next door to me. How many gas stations are on your street? How many gas stations are on your street? Think about that for a moment. There are so many gas stations on one street, but they don't feel threatened by each other. Why? Because you have to have something that's unique when it comes to your business. Something's got to be unique when it comes to you. When people get you, what do they get? Some of you may be wondering, how do we shift from talking about narcissism and the effects of it to talking about us as individuals? You got to focus on yourself. Even if you are a narcissist right now, I pray that you learn to stop trying to control everything. I pray that you learn that it's not about you as one individual. I pray that you understand that God sent you here to this earth to be a blessing to the world at large. Nothing is ever about one person. OK, it's amazing how God will allow us. To come here. And do something so great. God is showing you. Look. God, listen, truth, truth be told, God is showing that it ain't, it ain't even about all. It ain't always just about God. God is like, it's about the plan. It's about the purpose. It's about the mission. It's about the vision. It's about the destiny. See, it's funny because this whole time we thought that God was saying it was all about him. Well, God is saying, no, it's all about us. That's why God created you in his image and in his likeness, because it's truly not all about God. God is making it about us, too. Not one individual. That's what the Bible says. God has no respect of persons. But God says it's about us and what we're going to be able to create together. We all have to understand that we're all connected. We can't afford to be narcissists. We can't afford to try to control the people. We can't afford to try to always share our opinion when it comes to other people's lives. Your opinion when it comes to other people's lives don't matter. It really don't matter because people make their own decisions. They do whatever they do. And once you learn that, I promise you, then we're on to something greater. Allow God to speak to you. Allow God to show you the vision for your life. Allow God to show you the purpose for your life. And I'm telling you, when you do that, there is so much peace that's going to come over your life. When you start to pursue the things of God, there is so much peace that comes. I told my wife the other day, I said, babe, I just love the fact that there's so much peace in our home. There's so much peace in my mind and so much peace in my spirit. And guess what? It doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter. What matters is what God thinks about me. What matters is, will I hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant, when I transition out of here? That's what I, that's what I 
Listen, that's what I want to hear. Well done, thy good and faithful servant, because I want to have served every day. Every morning I wake up, I say, God, who can I serve today? How can I serve today? Lord, show me. You just show me, I'll do it. I'm crazy enough to do exactly what God says. I'm crazy enough to do it. Are you? Are you crazy enough to do what God said to do? I promise you, if you do it, watch what happens in your life. God bless you. I'm Dr. Des Moines Kenny. I pray that you got something from this word today. And listen, we're going to come back to this scripture because we got to finish it out in its entirety. I guarantee you, the rest of this story is going to blow your mind. And guess what? I want you to know this. Narcissism does indeed affect situations in a negative way. The outcomes, the outcomes are never favorable for the narcissist. So why would you want to be like that? Focus on the purpose that God has for you. Focus on the vision. Do what God has called for you to do and become who God has called you to become. God bless you. Always remember this. The word of God is the book of life, but it doesn't become life into your life until it speaks to your life. God bless you. Again, I'm Dr. Demoran Kenny, pastor of Faith Builders Ministries, located right here in Conyers, Georgia. God bless you. Love you guys. And I pray that you guys enjoy the Super Bowl today. I can't forget about that. Listen, I'm rooting for Cincinnati because I used to live in Ohio. So my wife is from Ohio. So I'm rooting for Cincinnati. So let's go, y'all. We got to do something, Bengals. All right. God bless y'all. Love you guys. Y'all have a great rest of your day. And y'all stay safe out there also. God bless you. Thank you.